from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Oh, welcome back to theCUBE. Continuing coverage here from AWS reInvent as we start to wind down our coverage here on the second day. We'll be here tomorrow as well, live on theCUBE, bringing you interviews from Hall D, Sands Expo, along with Justin Warren. I'm John Walls, and we're joined by Jonathan Ballin, who's the Vice President of the Internet of Things at Intel. Jonathan, thank you for being with us today. Good to Thanks see you. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, interesting announcement today. Last year, it was all about Deep Lens. Uh, this year, it's about Deep Racer. Tell us about that. What we're really trying to do is uh, make AI accessible to developers and democratize uh, various AI tools. Last year it was about computer vision. The Deep Lens camera was a way for developers to very inexpensively get a hold of a camera, the first camera that uh, was a, a deep learning enabled cloud connected camera so that they could start experimenting and see what they could do with that type of device. Yeah. This year we took the camera and we put it in a car. And we thought what, would, what, what could they do uh, if we add mobility and uh, to the equation, and specifically wanted to introduce a, uh, a relatively uh, obscure uh, form of AI called reinforcement learning. Uh, historically, this has been an area of, of AI that hasn't really been accessible to most developers because they haven't had the, the compute resources at their disposal uh, uh, or the scale uh, to do it. And so now what we've done is we've, we've built a car, um, and a set of tools that help the car it's a, run. It's a little miniature car, right? I mean, it's, it's a one, scale. It, it's one 118th scale. It's an RC car. All right. It's four-wheel drive, uh, four-wheel steering. It's got GPS, it's got um, uh, two batteries, one that runs the car itself, one that runs the compute platform and the camera. Uh, it's got expansion capabilities. We've got plans for next year of uh, how we can turbocharge the car. I love uh, it. Right now it's baby steps, uh, so to speak, and, and basically giving uh, the, uh, the developer uh, the chance to, to write a reinforcement learning model, an algorithm, uh, that helps them to determine what is the optimum way that this car can move around a track. But you're not telling the car what the optimum way is, you're letting the car figure it out on their own. And that's really the key to reinforcement learning is you don't need a large data set to begin with, it's pre-trained. You're actually letting, in this case, a device figure it out for themselves. And this becomes very powerful as a tool when you think about it being applied to various industries or various use cases where we don't know the answer today. But we can allow vast amounts of computing resources to run a reinforcement model over and over, perhaps millions of times until they find the optimum solution. So, so how do you, I mean, that's a lot of input, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a lot, that's I mean, a crazy number of variables. So, I mean, how do you do that? So how do you, like in this case, provide a car uh, with, with all the multiple variables that will come into play, how fast it goes and which direction it goes and all that, uh, and on different axes and all those things, to make these own determinations and how will that then translate to a real specific case in, in the workplace? Well, I mean, the, the obvious parallel is, of course, autonomous driving. Right. Uh, AWS had uh, uh, Formula One on stage today during Andy Jassy's keynote that's also a, an Intel customer, and what Formula One does is they uh, have the fastest cars in the world and they have over 120 sensors on that car that are bringing in over a million pieces of data per second. Uh, being able to process that vast amount of data that quickly, uh, which includes a variety of data, like it's not just, uh, it's also audio data, it's visual data, uh, and being able to use that to inform decisions in close to real time uh, requires very powerful compute resources. And those resources exist both in the cloud as well as uh, close to the source of the data itself at the edge in the physical yeah. environment. Yeah. So, Tell us a bit about the software that's involved here, because people think of Intel, some people don't know about the software heritage that, that Intel has. It's not just about the, the Intel inside, is, isn't just the hardware chips that's there. There's a lot of software that goes into this. So what's the Intel angle here on the, on the software that powers this kind of distributed learning? Absolutely, software is a very important part of any AI architecture. Um, and uh, for us, uh, we have 
a tremendous amount of investment. It's almost uh, perhaps uh, equal investment in software as we do in hardware. In the case of what we announced today with Deep Racer and AWS, um, there's some toolkits that allow developers to better harness the compute resources on the car itself. Uh, two things specifically. One is we have um, a tool called RL Coach, or uh, uh, Reinforcement Learning Coach, mm. that is integrated into SageMaker, AWS's uh, machine learning toolkit, uh, that allows them to access uh, better performance uh, uh, in the cloud uh, of that data that's coming uh, into the, off their model in, uh, into the cloud. Huh. And then we also have a toolkit called OpenVINO. Uh, it's not about drinking wine. Oh, Darn. Yes. All right. Uh, open means it's an open source uh, contribution that we made to the industry. Vino, uh, V-I-N-O, is visual inference and neural network optimization. Yeah. And this is a powerful tool because so much of AI is about harnessing compute resources efficiently. And as more and more of the data that we uh, bring into our compute environments is actually taking place in the physical world, it's really important uh, to be able to do that in a cost-effective and power-efficient uh, way. OpenVINO allows developers to actually isolate individual cores or an integrated GPU on a, uh, uh, on a CPU without knowing anything about hardware architecture, right. and it allows them to then apply different applications or different algorithms or inference workloads uh, very efficiently onto that compute architecture, but it's abstracted away from uh, any knowledge of that. So it's really designed for an application developer uh, who maybe is working with a data scientist that's built a neural network in a framework like TensorFlow or Onyx or PyTorch, any tool that they're already comfortable with, abstract away from the silicon and optimize their model onto this hardware platform. So it performs at orders of magnitude better performance than what you would get from a more traditional kind of GPU approach. Yeah, and that, that kind of decision making about understanding chip architectures to be able to, to, to optimize how that works, that's some deep magic really. The, the, the amount of understanding that you would need to have to do that as a human is, is enormous. But as, as a developer, I don't know anything about chip, chip architectures. So it sounds like the, it's a theme that we've been hearing over the last couple of days. Is these tools allow developers to have essentially superpowers. So you become an augmented intelligence yourself rather than just giving everything to an artificial intelligence. These tools actually augment the human intelligence and allow you to do things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. And that's, I think, the key to getting mass market adoption of some of these AI implementations. So, you know, for the last four or five years since ImageNet, uh, you know, solved the, uh, the image recognition problem, uh, and now we have greater uh, accuracy from computer models than we do from our own uh, human eyes. Uh, really, AI was limited to academia or large IT uh, tech companies. Uh, or um, you know, proof of concepts. It didn't really scale into these production environments, but what we've seen over the last couple of years is really a democratization of AI by companies like AWS and Intel that are making tools available to developers so they don't need to know how to code in Python to you know, uh, optimize a, a compute module, or they don't need to, um, in many cases, understand the, the fundamental underlying architectures, they can focus on whatever business problem they're trying to solve or whatever um, you know, AI use case it is that they're working on. Yeah. Now I know you talked about Deep Lens last year, and now we got Deep Racer this year, and, and you've got the contest going on throughout this coming year with Deep Racer, and, and we're going to have a big uh, race at the AWS uh, reInvent 2019. So what's next? I mean, or, or what are you thinking about conceptually that, that to, I guess, build on what you've already started here? Well, I, I can't reveal what well, next not, yeah, year's uh, uh, project will be. But well, what I can speaking, tell you, yeah. what I can tell you is what's available today in these deep racer cars is, is a level playing field. Everyone's getting the same car and they have essentially the same tool sets. But I've got a couple of pro tips for, uh, for your viewers, right. if they want to win some of these AWS summits that are going to be around the world in 2019, two pro tips. One is they can leverage the OpenVINO toolkit to get much higher inference performance from what's already on that car. Okay. 
Okay. So I encourage them to uh, work with OpenVINO. It's integrated into SageMaker so that they have easy access to it if they're an AWS developer. But also, uh, we're going to allow an expansion of uh, almost an accelerator of the car itself by uh, being able to plug in uh, an Intel neural compute stick. We just released the second version of this stick. It's a USB form factor. It's got a Movidius Myriad X vision processing unit inside. This year's version is eight times more powerful than last year's version. And when they plug it into the car, all of that inference uh, workload, all of those images and info, information that's coming off those sensors will have be put onto the VPU, allowing all the CPU and GPU resources to be uh, uh, used for, for other activities. It's going to allow that car to go at uh, turbo speed. To really cook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, so now you know, you, you have no excuse, right? I mean, uh, Jonathan has shared the secret sauce. Although I still think when you said open Vino, you got Justin really excited. It, I mean, it's, it's almost it, it open Vino almost, time. It yeah. is five o'clock, actually. <laughs> All right. Jonathan, Cody? thank you for being with us. Thanks for having we me, appreciate guys. Appreciate it, and good luck with Deep Racer for the coming year. Looks like thank a you. really, really fun project. Yeah. We're back with more here at AWS reInvent on theCUBE live in Las Vegas.